Hello everyone, uh, today in this video I'm going to show you how to install and use Node OBS Zoom OSC AutoCrop. But first I want to show you what it does. So basically, um, this is an example from a uh, production that was used on it. So Zoom itself cannot output individual feeds into OBS. And so that's what this code has the workaround and it accomplishes. It takes each person's box and it determines what order they're in, what size they are, and uh, where they are on the screen. And it goes through the code, and then it automatically crops them into OBS. So uh, let's jump into how we accomplish this. Um, so you can download everything you need and go through all the steps and resources on github.com slash jsha2 slash nodeobs dash zuboc dash autocrop. And in here, it gives you the full rundown on how it works, what it requires, the installation and setup, but this video is going to go through everything step by step. Um, so first, uh, make sure you download everything here. So first off would be OBS. If you're on Mac, Windows, whatever, download what you need. And then the second thing that you would also need for OBS is the OBS WebSocket plugin. Now for this, um, after you download it, so you can actually find it down in the assets down here, download whatever package that you need. After you install it into OBS, once you open it up, you will find it in your tools right here, WebSocket Server Settings. And then also another thing you will need is Node.js. So make sure you download Node.js. The current one right now is 15.6.0. And as for the OBS WebSocket JS and the Node OSC, these are actually dependencies that we will download later. So don't worry about these for right now, but make sure you go ahead and download Zoom OSC. And at the time of making this, uh, it's only 3.2.1 is currently out. So make sure you go ahead and download that. And, um, the next thing you'll probably want to download, you can choose this however you want, but I would recommend uh, Visual Studio Code for your code editor to run everything from. So once you download that, it'll bring you here. And then to get the code into Visual Studio Code Editor, the first thing you'll do is go to your code. Um, under here, you will copy this. And it's basically this just with uh, .git at the end. And then... Once you come into Visual Studio Code, to clone the repository into here, you will go to View, Command Palette, open it up, and then there should be a command, get colon clone. And then I can paste the URL, hit Enter. It'll ask me where I would want to save it. I'm going to pick somewhere in Documents, and I made one that's just an empty folder, Node Zoom OC OBS, select repository, and it's going to go ahead and download everything for me. And I'm going to open everything. Now we have the code in our code editor. And you'll also see that it comes with package.json, package.lock.json, and then an assets folder that has um, some image references uh, for certain things, an OBS scene collection, and then also an OBS OSC examples for that. And same with a touch OSC layout, which we'll get to after a while. Um, and if you want to know more about how the layout is, uh, all the assets are in there too for signal flow. Um, so, but just going back to the next thing that we need to know is once we get all this in here, uh, we're going to need to install our dependencies. So that's what I was saying about the OBS WebSocket JS and Node OSC. We need to install them. And it says right here, our dependencies are those two things. And when, when we uh, download the repository, it doesn't actually install these things. So we need to, need to install them. So to do that, we're going to have to go to terminal open our terminal. And if you are on Mac, make sure you type in sudo npm install. Click enter, and you're gonna have to type in your password. So once you, uh, if you had any errors or you were getting that it command was not found, make sure that you did download node.js because you will need that for this to work. And you'll notice and you'll see that node module folder got added. So this is everything that the dependencies uh, need for this code to work that it refers back to. So everything there is fine. And when we go into our code, we can actually go ahead and just run this. But uh, we want to go ahead and get our code configured as well. So in the code, let's uh, set up our OBS real quick, our scenes over here. So right now, I'm just in a blank OBS uh, scene collection. Uh, to add in the collection that I got from there, I want to go to import and find the scene that came in the assets folder. And you'll see it's added to OSC, I believe. Yes. Okay, so in here, um, you see that we have everything numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
and so on and forth, forth up to up to nine. Um, and these are going to be your individual actors and in their feeds that it's uh, cropping. And this is going to dynamically change once we start running our code. But just know how it's set up is we have a scene in each person is displayed captured from our second monitor. I actually have a second monitor. So right now OBS is display capturing my second monitor, which you can see right here. Um, and eventually we will have Zoom OSC over there as well that we will um, pull from. In OBS, we also want to set up the web sockets because that's what's going to trigger uh, these scenes and having automatically cropping mainly happen. So in our WebSocket server settings, uh, we want to match this to match right here in the code. So our IP, the port that we're sending it to, and the password. So right now this is the default. This is how it comes. We're going to enable authentication to secret, which we will set there as well. So that is saved. And once we start running the code, it should automatically start being able to trigger things in OBS. So the next thing I want to do is open up QLab uh, with the same assets thing just to get a reference of what QLab's role in this is. So once you load up the QLab file, um, you'll notice that uh, you'll, you'll actually have some triggers in here that you can um, already change trigger scenes into OBS, uh, source visibility, change opacity, and all that. And uh, zoom, uh, Node OBS Zoom OSC Auto Crop is actually an extension of the Node OBS OSC repository that basically just takes OSC commands and sends them to OBS. Here is where we need to set up Zoom OSC. And we need to log in. And then I currently have um, my laptop and my iPad set up to be actors right now. So we're gonna have two actors. And um, Zoom OSC on this computer is gonna be the main hosting computer. So we're gonna join it. And for the display name, um, depending on how you want to set up your show, I like to set it up as show feed because this is what the actors are going to see the finished product as. To get the show feed activated from OBS into here, you're going to start your virtual camera, come into Zoom OSC, and then choose OBS virtual camera. So this way, the actors will be able to see uh, the show feed. And for audio, uh, we can worry about that later. But for now, as long as we got the show feed in here. So right now, it is um, Joe Shea and Joe Shea's iPad. I'm actually going to rename this to how OBS will interpret it, 1 and 2. I'm also making the show feed host. So once you get this far in to Zoom OSC, uh, what you're going to want to do now is to switch into gallery view mode, hide hide self view so that you won't be able to see it. Um, this is important because it's just how the code works. So make sure that you hide self view. Another thing you want to make sure that you do is that you would, you'll also hide non video participants. So that way when you just have one person uh, that has their video on, you get the much more fuller quality. So make sure those two things are enabled. I'm going to go ahead and redo that video. So as for loading this each time, um, when you do have your actors and everything set up in the show file, you're going to want to have an initial save or update and save this file. So I'm going to bring the Zoom OSC terminal forward and I'm actually going to send Zoom OSC an update. I'm also going to make sure that I'm sending to the right one. And the port for Zoom OSC is 8000. You can actually change that if you want. Um, it's right here, the transmit and receive. We are going to be receiving on here. And then localhost is 127.0.0.1. So we're going to hit done. And from here, we can send that update queue, but make sure that we're on the right one. So we're going to send that update queue. It loaded into its memory that zero is show feed, one and two are in the list. So now, once we actually, instead of doing update, we do a dash save. Save participants to file users documents performance config file. Now, this is actually important when you want to, if you'd want to switch around who goes where. So in our documents, um, it'll probably be around here. So if I open up this file, and you'll notice that how it's literally laid out is exactly what you saw below. So show feed one, two. Now, every time you run this code, um, the code, when it opens up, it'll actually load this file. So what, what auto update does is if, if somebody logs out and then logs back in, it'll keep them in the right place. 
So just know that every time you fire up the code, it will load this performance config.txt. And so who's ever named in here is the order that it will be in here. I'd also recommend keeping the actors named in numbers rather than their own name, because if you have names in here and then you get into OBS where you can set these, but you'll actually have to go in and recode some uh, things in here, which just keeping it what it's named scenes, it keeps kind of a consistent workflow. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna move the Zoom meeting onto the secondary monitor, and then we're gonna make this full screen. So then now we can go back to our code and then node, node obs-zoomoc.js. We can clear the terminal and then open it back up again. You can use the short key commands. And then now we're gonna do npm start. And another way you could type this is if you type node space node obs, the, basically this file name. Um, but npm start basically just runs this code. So, so it's a quick thing you can do. If we go back, npm start, enter, and you'll notice that it ran the code and it actually resnapped one that is up. Now, if I go to two, it'll probably be the iPad. So now we are running node OBS dash zoom OSC. So I have um, these two running right now, one and two. And right now in OBS, I'm just on scene one, which is just showing my isolated feed of one. And then here I have two. And if two goes away, so if I stop the video on two, it'll automatically turn off the source. So you don't have to worry about it going away on that. And if I go back to one, it'll automatically resize. So if I turn on the video, bloop, you'll notice that it'll, it was full screen and then now it was, now it's half the screen and then off to the left, but OBS um, uh, recropped it to the right size thanks to uh, the code over here. Now, like I said before, what, some things you can do to utilize this in different scenes is you bring in other nested scenes. So I can take one and then I can take scene two. And then from here, you can start compositing different uh, scenes into each other. And then if you really wanted to, um, you can duplicate them, move them around. So that way, if you have a move transition, you can start automating different things. So as for how QLab is implemented, at least in the show that I did, um, this is where you will trigger most of your scenes. So if I wanna trigger scene one in here, the easiest way to do it would be if I were to do slash scene one and then in quotations or without quotations, you can do scene one or in this case, uh, let's see if I wanna do scene three right here. I want it to go to this. So I would do scene three and then send that and then it triggered that queue and if you and if you're getting errors and you don't know what's going on um, everything in the terminal here is actually logging so you'll notice we got an osc in scene scene three and a new active scene scene three so it gets the osc in and then if obs sends stuff out it's like oh hey i got uh, the scene was activated it sends another it logs it to the console so this is how you would trigger scenes in OBS. So once you have this set up, you can also trigger scenes. You can change opacity, filters, visibility, automate position. Um, a lot of that stuff you maybe want to do just in OBS with the move tool by itself. All right, so that's basically the setup of how this is. Um, and you can use the setup in SignalFlow reference of how everything kind of talks to each other. Uh, one thing I didn't mention yet, and here's kind of a bonus. Uh, that I find super helpful is the touch OSC on iPad. You can use this on, uh, touch OSC is free. You can use it on the phones. Um, the, the layout I have is for iPad and it is included in the assets. I actually got a setup right here and I'll show you kind of how to set it up. You'd want to connect your iPad to the same network as whatever's running your code. And in this case, um, kind of another tip is if you're on a Mac, and you have ethernet coming in, you can actually use internet sharing to make the connection from the iPad even faster. So you use the ethernet in, um, and that could be found right here. Sharing, internet sharing, uh, turn that on. Um, your Wi-Fi signal will have an up arrow, and then the iPad will connect to that, and it'll be uh, a lot quicker than going through the Wi-Fi sometimes. So to install the TouchOC layout onto the iPad, you'll actually have to go and install uh, TouchOSC editor so in here in touch oc editor download it. so once you get touch oc editor open you're actually going to want to open the file that 
is downloaded in the assets folder, which is the touch OC layout right here. So we're going to open up that and here's where you can configure it. If you only have a phone, um, you can move these around, but to get it onto your iPad, make sure your connect, your iPad's connected. Make sure you have touch OC downloaded on that as well. And then you're going to go to sync and then it gives you instructions right there. But on the iPad, you're actually going to go to the top, right? Click there, go to layout. Um, at the top it says add, it'll pop up and then you'll add it and it'll come into your um, layouts right here. So once you get that installed, you're going to want to change uh, this first one of the host to the IP of the computer. So right now, um, if I go to my network and 192.168.1.207, I change that to that. And then port outgoing, I want to send to the same thing that's going to go to OBS which is port 333. And so once I save all that, I can click done and then I'm back in here. And then you'll notice in node OBS zoom OSC.js um, in the terminal, uh, if I start clicking buttons, it's gonna start uh, giving me some different things called a line, uh, scale, and I can even move stuff around so to control it, uh, you actually have to be clicked on a source. So whatever's highlighted, it'll move that. So um, right now I don't have two uh, enabled because I'm using my iPad, but I can still move it around. So whatever's highlighted, it will affect and update that one. So if I go back to one, and then the, the quick, these, so these would be quick editable features to update uh, sources in OBS. So basically what this does is instead of coming into OBS and dragging stuff around, moving it and like tweaking it, it does snap, which is nice. I mean, I guess you could transform and then fit to screen, do whatever you want there. But if you just wanted to simply um, center it, make it half, throw it over there and then tweak it that way, that's just, this is uh, a simple way of doing it. Another thing that's pretty quick, if you wanna go from scene to scene, so if we wanna go to here to here, but instead of a move, I want it to be a fade. So coming into here, I'll actually click on the scene and then I'll, I can type a fade of uh, seven seconds. And then you'll notice that it changed the transition override to a fade of 7,000 milliseconds, which is seven seconds. So if I come in here and then I click into the next one, it'll fade to seven seconds. So this is how you can change the um, transition override with your fade types and your fade durations. Um, and same thing with scale. I also uh, put in here to where you can have increments of scale sizes, but you can also uh, have fine tune your scale size, make it full. And if you wanna center, and if you wanna even make it uh, bigger than its, its full self, you can scale it even up more by three times in this and you can change this in the touch OSC editor if you want to as well. Um, same thing with fine tuning your Y or your X. And you have your XY for that too. Um, the thing I put on the second page, so this is actually for running the show. So this would be if you want to um, people send requests for video on or audio on for everybody. So if they forget to turn their audio or video on, you can send them um, a push request. Same thing with the OBS source. Sometimes if the source is off for some reason, you can turn it on that way. Um, and this slider down here is just for, is basically when uh, the, the gallery view changes from like, let's say two to three people. Uh, there's that split second where it has to auto crop at the same moment that it changes in real time. So um, that definitely varies on your CPU usage and kind of other cases too. So uh, this slider allows you to change uh, exactly how much that is. And it's not by too much, so you won't be fully off. So yeah, that was kind of an in-depth guide to setting up Node OBS Zoom OSC auto crop. Um, everything I went over is also in the GitHub, kind of in order a setup too. Um, same as the signal flow, if you really want to get in depth of how it all talks to each other and some uh, picture reference guides, hopefully what I did here too helped out as well. 
Um, and please join the Discord if you want to talk to me or anybody else using it directly. But yeah, thank you.